In the Trinity, there is said to be three distinct persons, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and each of the persons is fully God. Now stopping there, First John. Christians actually worship three gods. However, nowhere in the Bible hmm? or Christian tradition does the Trinitarian concept Chapter five. of tritheism, meaning three gods, God is always... Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that beget loveth him also, that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And three are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his son. He that believeth on the son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He that hath the son have life, and he that hath not the son of God have not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear, that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death, and do not say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. We know that whatsoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God is come and have given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. In the Trinity, there is said to be three distinct persons, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and each of the persons is fully God. Now stopping there, it would appear that Christians actually worship three gods. However, nowhere in the Bible or Christian tradition does the Trinitarian concept become a tritheism, meaning three gods. God is always declared as one, which turns this doctrine into quite a mind-bender. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are said to share one nature, but the Father is not the same person as the Son, who is not the same person as the Holy Spirit, who is not the same person as the Father. They are three distinct persons in one substance, essence, or nature. Chronicles of Narnia author C.S. Lewis suggests that humans shouldn't be able to fully grasp a being that is beyond our three-dimensional world and uses this following example. If you are using only one dimension, you can draw only a straight line. If you are using two, you could draw a figure, say a square, and a square is made up of four straight lines. 
Now a step further, if you have three dimensions, you can then build what we call a solid body, say a cube, a thing like a dice or a lump of sugar. And a cube is made up of six squares. He's making the point that a world of one dimension would be a straight line. In a two-dimensional world, you still get straight lines, but many lines make one figure. And in a three-dimensional world, you still get figures, but many figures make one solid body. In other words, as you advance to more real and more complicated levels, you do not leave behind you the things you found on the simpler levels, you still have them, but combined in new ways, in ways you could not imagine if you knew only the simpler levels. Now the Christian account of God involves just the same principle. The human level is a simple and rather empty level. On the human level, one person is one being, and any two persons are two separate beings. Just as, in two dimensions, one square is one figure, and any two squares are two separate figures. On the divine level, you still find personalities, but up there you find them combined in new ways which we, who do not live on that level, cannot imagine. In God's dimension, so to speak, you find a being who is three persons while remaining one being.